How's you cousins? It's old Rusty here, and we've got a really fun, exciting video for you today. Was over in Wilmington recently, partially on vacation, but also to, uh, to source. And the cool thing about that area is that's where a dear uh, friend or two of mine live. Uh, Miss Caroline and her twin sister Dorita uh, were over there, and uh, I didn't get to see Dorita. She was uh, she was involved in something else. But Caroline has her own company uh, of interior design and decorating and things like that they can she can help a lot of people out and so she was going to help me out and I thought, well, this would be a great opportunity to kind of bring this to you because I'm sure this could help you as well. We're talking about finding things to reuse. This can be good for um, interior design, but uh, also uh, certain values of things you may not know. And so I'm going to see some stuff, go to some places in her area uh, in this video and show you. She's going to teach you a thing or two. Maybe you'll learn something from me also, but let's get into this. I mean, my idea of decorating would be something like putting a couple of He-Man heads inside of a an old Las Vegas casino ashtray, or perhaps uh, having an old uh, statue of a knight, but instead of holding a sword or a spear, he's holding on to an old metal bullfrog. I mean, is it avant-garde? Yes. Is it going to be winning me any sort of decorating awards anytime soon? No. And so I definitely need some help. And that's what Caroline's going to help me out with today. Not only how to decorate, but also just finding those items you can reuse, which is great. And also um, knowing the things that people might be able to use that look good, then that'll help me come up with other ideas of things to buy and sell. Caroline can do a better job um, introducing herself than I can. So let's hear from her and then we'll get on the road. Hi, I'm Caroline Sellers and I own Title Interiors here in Wilmington. And I'm really excited to show Rusty around today. Um, he's got actually a few places I've never been and I've got a few places that I'm really excited to show him. Um, I think, you know, I've been a follower of Rusty's for a long time and it's really exciting to show him how I like to use vintage and antique items and styling and staging and to make people's homes unique and filled with character. So he's gonna show me some things that are really valuable that I probably wouldn't know were. And then I'm gonna show you some things that I would buy and how I might upscale them or flip them um, or even just use them in their typical way. So let's go. All right, folks, we're here at the ReStore. Uh, we're gonna go check out a couple of things, see if there's something we can find, and Caroline can help uh, maybe put something together for us and teach us how to do it. Let's go! Right, we're in the car here. Caroline's uh, chauffeuring me around, and uh, this is awesome. This is kind of a new world for me. I'm learning some things. We're gonna hit another spot here. Vintage Values is the name of this one. Uh, Habitat did not have exactly what we were looking for, um, but uh, you know, there's, and there's no need for an alarm. We're gonna find something. I'm guaranteeing it. Um, let's get in here. Good. The jacket's kind of ugly, but if you take the jacket off. Mm -hmm. That looks nice on the shelf. Sure. Or something like this. Yeah, beautiful. I'm gonna yeah. come up here and zoom up to the. Sometimes like when I'm uh, styling a bathroom, it can be really hard because you think soap, what else do you put in a bathroom? But if you want, you can get a tray and put it on the vanity, put some of these like antique perfume bottles on there. Um, something that feels functional and like it should be in a bathroom, 
but it's still really pretty and it's interesting. It's not just something you ordered online at any big box store. Yeah. Has some character. Um, and right. Some of these that are really, has some really pretty color to them, depending on the color scheme of your bathroom. But, um, Wonderful. Yeah, really pretty stuff. So another thing, you have a shelf, you have a coffee table, something that just is kind of plain. So if you have some of these old humidors, old boxes, um, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy. You mm -hmm. put that on there yeah. and it has some natural element to it, some texture. Um, I mean, obviously you can go a little bit crazy and get some that are a little, a little bit more stylized. Um, but they really just yeah, this one looks little, pretty old. Yeah, really cool. It's like a jewelry box. Always. They're great for putting your remotes in too, if you want that function aspect. Um, but you know, if you put this, which is plain, put a candle on it. There you go. You've got a couple little fun and pretty things on a coffee table that makes it a little bit more interesting. Right. All right, uh, definitely learning some stuff. Caroline's giving me some great advice. We're gonna go in another spot here, see if we can find something else, maybe uh, teach you a thing or two. sometimes can really get good value you know get good value out of them like this is an uncommon set of of shears but they're you know they're steel and so you can put a little bit of like um, distilled vinegar on them clean out all that it'll eat away at that and then you can get out with one of those like wire brush attachments on a hand drill and you can clean these things up they'll just shine they'll be shiny um, and they'll sell for good money this is you know this one's a little high it's like eight dollars but sometimes you can get them for like a dollar or less at um, yard sales and stuff and it can really work out well for you right here i've found this they say it's vintage question mark it's eight dollars i don't know what it is but i know what it is it is an oyster shucking knife it's handmade $8, I could probably get 30 or 40 out of this. I mean, technically speaking, I think these are women's pants, um, but man, I mean, just that vintage look. I don't come across blue cords all that often, but you know, just nice, just makes somebody want to like do this. Hmm, you might have to think on it. No back pockets though, it might be a deal breaker. thing that I've done in the past. Um, this it's usually used for like knitting and sewing projects that you would keep beside the, the couch or the chair or whatever. Um, a lot of times you can find these and the fabric might be a little uh, stinky or <laughs> smoke infused. Right. Um, so what I have done in the past, you buy this, you take this off and you put in a new piece of fabric. And this is actually what I use for a magazine rack in my house. So, oh, wonderful. Yep, it's just a spare piece of fabric. You loop it, do a very simple stitch here and here, and then you can put all your magazines, your books, toys, whatever, on the side of the couch. And it's a great little organization piece. Awesome. Okay, so obviously we're here at the beach, so nautical and coastal types of decor are really popular. These are vintage, they're solid brass. They're quite heavy, but they're wow. really pretty mm -hmm. and great for styling a shelf. A bedside table, dresser, anything like that. We just need a little something, gives a little bit of shimmer, um, and yeah. some a nod to the local culture. Yeah, so that's also cool. I found this little copper figurine of a, 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 a Native American person on a on a horse. Don't know if I'm going to give it or not. It doesn't have a price on it, so. We'll wait and see. Totems, you know, tiki related stuff can sell very well. Keep a look out for tiki stuff. Let's buy one and get one half off. And I found a little, a little kitty purse. 
bedazzled. It's not for me. Trolls can sell very well uh, online, depending on the age. And this is one that's kind of newer. It says China, but one's by Russ. And some of the really old ones, uh, they kind of look different in the face. But this one says, the older I get, the better I used to be. And I think that's very true. What do you think about styling like a kid's room with that? It would be like uh, these, these old dolls. Yeah. I think it's possible. It just depends. Like when I was growing up, there was this um, this clown mm. uh, doll and it was just absolutely terrifying <laughs> to me. Yeah. So we got to be careful. We don't want the crackling faces. We don't want one eyeball down, right. one eyeball up. Absolutely. As long as they're cute looking uh and not to uh, don't have like their faces melting or anything like that then i think we're good yeah i don't know if you got a good close-up of these um this so i'm gonna say from from a styling standpoint this is a like a pretty much a hundred percent hard no oh okay well yeah I'm, i didn't know if you knew like the value uh, are they you know, off off the top of my head i don't know the values but the eyes are quite lifelike i've noticed they are and uh let's see here let me tap on the foot well, this is plastic. Reflexes. This the plastic. reflexes are... If it were porcelain, probably absent. more likely that it's older and may worth more. Okay. But the, the plastic, I mean, it's pretty lifelike. The, the, you know, you got the creases in the toes and yeah. all that. Um, they have kind of a lipstick look, which is sort of strange. Like, why is a baby wearing lipstick? This this has like a nine to five hair situation Dolly going. Pardon, you're right. Yeah. I wonder if it sings songs like Dolly. I don't see any buttons anywhere. Sometimes when you're looking at dolls, a lot of times you'll want to look on the back or on the back of the neck. As a matter of fact, here you go. You see that 2007 Heritage Mint Limited. And so clearly not that old. And she's wearing a wig, it turns out as well. This is not actually her hair. So which also is unfortunate. nine to five. Yeah. All right. Well, that's yeah. a pass. But that's thank a, you that's for... a pass for me also. All right. Well, so, hey. Sometimes you win them. Sometimes we're in agreement. You lose them. I found myself a nice, uh, from the 1960s, I believe, based on the bottom of the bottle, it has a 68. I'm going to say that's probably the year, but it's an old whiskey bottle, old, old granddad. And um, we've got the, uh, see, this is the sort of the, uh, what would you call that? Uh, it's not a sticker. A I guess it's kind of a seeker. Yeah. It is. It was the seal. It indicated that uh, I believe taxes were paid um, on it. And I don't think that there's, you know, it's. It's got the original cork and stuff, but it'd be kind of hard. I'm worried that if I pull it, I might pop the, I might break the cork. But it's cool. When you find old bottles like this, it's best if you find them with the labels. If the labels are intact, uh, the nicer they look, the more uh, that you'll make. And these can be kind of cool, and just like on bookshelves or things like that. Yeah. What do you say? They're great for staging. Like if you have a bar area, you have that. You have some nice glassware. It's great. It's perfect. Kitchens. Yeah. So, so this might be a yes. Yeah. If you're if you were styling like a, a bachelor pad you can put it on the nightstand anywhere there are lots of really really great uses that for that. awesome yeah it good like choice something passed by a moment ago but I, maybe not it was, i did find something i'm gonna get this is a it's a it's kind of like a banker's style land mm -hmm. um I, I find these all year long different kinds the best ones are the ones with the green glass mm -hmm. and the older right. the better sometimes they don't work you gotta you gotta redo the plug um but uh but anyways i find these for five or ten bucks a lot of times i can sell them for 50 or 60 dollars sometimes more than that yeah. this one's not as old but this one's kind of cool because you can kind of lift it up or turn it down um anyhow people still it's functional right right so that's probably something nice sometimes you'll find things that are both aesthetic but also functional for people right. yeah yeah no i really like that i mean um brass gold those are all really in right now and it's great for using like you know styling your desk for, and, for sure and actually putting a little lamp on a kitchen counter is always a great idea also so yeah good awesome. choice Folks, thanks so much for sticking around. I'm a little bit embarrassed, folks. I was out there at the beach, and uh, I was with a couple of junior cousins. There was a lot of waves, and I had to, at one point, I had to hold one of the kiddos up, and uh, a wave just slapped across my face and knocked my beard right off. And I'm, I'm, I'm you know, unfortunately, I lost that sucker. 
someone's going to be real excited when they come across that beard because it was uh i worked real hard on it but anyhow that's why there's a disconnect between some of the video and me right now is it uh you know i'm gonna have to work on finding another one but anyhow uh thank you so much for sticking around thank you caroline for giving us so many awesome pieces of advice i wonder uh i'm gonna throw this up real quick caroline was nice enough to kind of give some information please reach out to her if you have any questions please go find her on her social media platforms and her websites and stuff she can help you i guarantee it and just one day gave me a lot of great ideas Yes, Tidal Interiors, that's Tidal as in the Tides, Tidal Interiors NC, and you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and then the website is TidalInteriorsNC.com. So, until next time, folks, um, you know, hope you find some awesome treasures, and uh, here's a real hot tip from me, uh, just because, uh, just to kind of get you till the next video. Rusty's Now, two cousins. I'm out here okay, just checking corn. Uh, I'm teaching teaching some cousins how to do it. Uh, you know, William Percival Scribner III was the first person in 1625 to uh, come up with the term shucking, and it's uh, it's actually comes from the sound it makes. Believe it or not, and if you if you if you lean in here, you're gonna hear it. It makes a a noise, just a noise. It's like a shuck noise. Shucking. Corn shuckings. Listen again. And uh, you'll know, you'll know if you're doing it the right way because you get that real serious shuck noise. If you're not doing it wrong, you'll get weird sounds like ducks make or other types of animals. And that's just not gonna work for you. It's gonna be too tough when you, when you cook it. Now you have your properly shucked corn. You've got most of the stringings taken off. You gotta you gotta pull the stringings out. That's not hard. But then you got the cracking at the end. You've done the shucking, and then you've got the cracking, and that's where you pop the last piece off the bottom, and it makes a crack noise. If you'll lean in here, you'll hear it. Crack. Do you hear that? That's a really good cracking right there. We got corn shuckings, and then we got the cracking at the end. Please go find some.